Hey everybody, welcome back to Auto Scholar with Mr. B. I'm Mr. B and today I have a very important equipment review. Now, I don't really do reviews on my channel, but I was contacted by this company and they said they wanted to send me a multimeter to check out. So multimeters are very important in this industry and it's one of the things I require my students to buy. So there are a lot of multimeters out there and you can just about spend as much money as you want to. Um, but there are things that we have to have out of multimeters we use in the automotive field. And I always try to find the meter that is the most durable, that has the best price, and still has those features uh, that my students can use and don't cost you know, an arm and a leg, okay? So the industry standard that we use is either the, the new uh, Snap-on EEDM meter, uh, which I have a ton of. I own about 20 of those meters, and some of them are back here in these cabinets. And, um, but I don't recommend, if you're getting into this business or if you're just a do-it-yourselfer, just doing stuff at home for you to go out and buy one of those meters or like a fluke meter or something like that. Uh, there are meters out there that can be, you know, around $100 or so that are good meters and will do everything that you need them to do. And they're, they're fine. Okay, so uh, when they contacted me, I started looking at their meter, uh, the pricing, the, the features and everything, and I was a little interested. And so I said, you know what, send me a meter, I'll see what I can do, I'll take a look at it. And what I did, this is a Kiwitz KM601, and this is the company Kiwitz, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, but this is their new meter, and uh, it has some features that are very interesting. And it also, just the shape and the size of this is kind of what brought me to this, because most of my students are always on their phones, and they're used to having a phone in their hand, and this is basically the same size, shape of a cell phone. Uh, it, it seems to be pretty durable. And so I said, you know what, send me one, give it a shot. And I took this meter, unboxed it, and put the batteries in it and everything else, and started using it around the shop for things that I would normally use my Snap-on meter. Now, the Snap-on meter that I use is about $450 for one of those. And this one comes in right around, uh, at this time, Amazon's got around $40 or so and depending on who you buy it from. So at that point, I became a little bit skeptical because I've used $40 meters before and they're hit or miss. And hit or miss is not what we need while we're measuring something that can possibly be hundreds of dollars that we have to replace. And the meter, you know, garbage in, garbage out, giving you a bad reading is definitely a detriment in our business. We have to have good data coming in to make good diagnostic decisions. So having a cheap meter is really just the antithesis of that. So I got this, this thing came in uh, the other day. I put it through, I let all the students use it. I just put it out on my desk. I let the other instructor use it. Uh, a couple of my shop helpers used it. And um, they said it was, it, was, it was a pretty good experience. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and do a review. I'm gonna tell you the high points and low points of this meter. And then we're gonna put it up against my $450 Snap-on meter to see how accurate it is. So I've got my Consolab uh, Ohm's Law Trainer up here. This is one of the boards I use. And it's cool because I can set the voltage. I can take this knob and it's got an internal voltmeter and I can set the voltage coming out of this board to the exact voltage that I want. And so we're gonna use this as kind of our test mule for our Kiwitz meter. And we're gonna test that up against my Snap-on meter and see how accurate this is, okay? Because we have to have accuracy. So. Uh, if you learn anything from this video, please give me a like and, of course, subscribe to the channel. And I'm going to show you at the end of the video, I'm going to give this away to one of my viewers. So there's going to be an instructions on that. And when you follow to the end of the video, uh, you'll find those instructions. So we'll go ahead and get one of those, uh, one of these Kiwits shipped directly to you. Also, the company said that they're going to give me some kind of link that gives you a discount as a viewer of Auto Scholar with Mr. B. So definitely subscribe to the channel so you can come back. And, and if you're interested in this meter, you know where to go to where you can find one. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to put this down on the table and we'll go over the features. Okay, so this is the box it comes in. Uh, it also comes with two sets of the AAA batteries that this meter takes. It takes three batteries. Um, and so it comes with six batteries, which is pretty cool. Uh, shipping was great. It came in, you know, a, a cardboard box. And you have these test leads, and these test leads are pretty nice, 
Okay, I've, I've done the resistance on them. There's barely any resistance in them at all, so nothing to throw um, your reading off. They also have removable tips there. So you got a little bit deeper of a dive there if you want to. Now, if you add this tip on, it actually helps you measure a higher voltage. This is a uh, Cat 3 meter, but it does have Cat 4 leads. So uh, perfectly good for any of your lower voltage hybrids, your Prius, anything like that. If you have a Tesla or something like that, I would definitely get something a little bit higher Cat rating here. You also have your thermocouple here and a nice little case here. Kind of looks like a sunglass case. Owner's manual and of course the meter. So the meter is pretty special because it's different from anything I've ever seen before. Now, that being said, I don't go around shopping for meters. I have a Fluke, I have you know a ton of these snap-on meters that I use, so really I'm not in the market for a meter. And But I am on the market for finding my students a decent meter to use that doesn't cost as much as one of the snap-ons or one of the Flukes. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up. You have a power button right here, and you're just gonna hold that down, and it will come on. And nice fully uh, color LED screen. And you notice it says auto right here. And we're going to get to that in a minute. But the uh, meter itself is about the size of a cell phone. I'm going to reach into my pocket and grab. I have an iPhone 13. And so here's my puppy dog. My iPhone 13 is very comparable in shape. iPhone's obviously a little heavier than this. Um, but... You know, if you're just going to throw this in your pocket, uh, it should work fine. So, one of the cool things is, as I flip over the vac, it has a work light on it. So, when I hold this down, see, is it going? Yeah, there you go. Um, the work light comes on, and so if you're underneath the dash or something like that, and it's kind of dark down there, you can use the work light. It's not very bright. It's not as bright as like a cell phone work light is, but. Uh, it's still pretty nice. It's got a little light on the side there. And you got your um, auto power off button right here. So if you want to keep this meter, if you're monitoring something, this will actually shut down after a few minutes to save battery. So the really cool thing about this is the auto function that it has. If you have your meters hook, hooked up, and you're wanting to read something, it, it can actually tell what you're trying to do. So if, I've, if I'm reading resistance, it'll automatically switch to my ohms and give me my resistance reading. But also, what it can do, if I want to do uh, not auto, if I just want to, I can select between you know AC and DC voltage, uh, but also I can move this needle, and it's going to show me, see those green lights, it's going to show me where my leads need to go. And so, you know, of course, Normally they go over here, but if I get over here to my amperage, you'll see now that the, those lights change. And then right here, also it says lead. It can tell that the, the meter's not hooked up. So it'll tell you, hey, your lead's loose. And that's pretty interesting because um, a lot of mistakes I see my students make are not putting the leads in the correct spot. So right then I can select what I want to measure and it'll tell me exactly where my leads need to go. And I thought that was pretty interesting. So this is a good meter if you're trying to learn how to use a meter. And in, uh, the user's manual is also very, very good, very detailed. English on it's good. This is a foreign product. This is not, you know, American made. But there's, sometimes you get something from overseas and the English in it is horrible, but this is very good reading. It also has a couple of other languages in there as well. I didn't count which ones, but um, but overall, the function and the way this thing is laid out and the way it works, I can you know auto select what I'm measuring. I can auto select range. I can hold and release. I can do maximum and minimum right here. So overall, the design, the layout of the meter is pretty cool. Now let's go over here and see how accurate it is. Okay, so. I'm going to have this set right here. One, one of the kind of annoying things about this uh, meter is I don't have a tripod or anything or an easel stand or anything to, to, to set this thing up. So I just got it leaned up in uh, the uh, stand for the console lab. And right now I have this set on auto. 
So I'm gonna take these off just because it's a little bit easier to get down in here. And my voltage on my voltage readout here should be 13.16. I just got it set to whatever. And we're just gonna hang this in the power. And we're gonna hang this in the ground. And I'm measuring 13.13. See if I can move that out of the way here. So 13.12, 13.13, which is probably, you know, good enough. Let me uh, go over here and see. Now, I'm not changing anything, but I'm just going to grab the meter leads and I'm going to go over here to this resistor. And the meter will click. You'll hear a small little click. And that's on a 100 ohm resistor, so boom it automatically reads 100 ohms, which is pretty cool. I don't have to stop. I don't have to, to switch anything around. And that's something that my $450 snap-on meter does not do. So I don't know if that's an advantage to you, but uh, you know it may complicate things. And of course, if we complicate something, that's uh, not always a good thing. But this thing will swap back and forth and it'll go right back to voltage and it'll show 13.12. And I think that's pretty neat. I like it because if you're if you're just, you know, going through the motions of trying to get a car diagnosed, you don't have to stop, you don't have to to change anything out and and it'll go boom right back. I'll just put my fingers together and it auto ranges everything's good. Goes to reading resistance. We can just check the resistance real quick. So right now we're reading short point, let's see, almost zero ohms. So it's, it has the alarm letting you know that. And you have the little green light there. So I think that's pretty neat. And something you, you I really wouldn't expect to see in a meter at this cost. So let's change the voltage. And yeah, meter follows right along with the voltage change. It's got a little bit of a lag to it, but well within expected of a meter of this price. So let me grab my snap-on meter and let's see how we stack up with accuracy. Okay, this is my snap-on meter. It's kind of my go-to meter for anything because it's got such a large readout. There we go. Somebody left it on. And so we will put our readings on here and see how close they get. So I'm shooting 9.99, the Kiwitz is 9.97, and the board is uh, fluctuating 9.99 to 10. So I would say that the snap-on meter is probably a little bit more accurate. Now it could be that these leads aren't as nice. You know, you've got a little bit of resistance in these leads or you know, it could be a multitude of things. The fact that you can buy 10 of these for the price of that. And so, but it's close, which is, um, you know, a lot better than some of the other meters that I have suggested to my students that cost well more than $40, $50 that these do. So uh, resistance, again, I'm going to have to Thing about this is I'm gonna have to change it manually. And let's do my resistance here with the Kiwitz. 100.1 ohms, right here. I do like how the Kiwitz has 
a pretty long probe. So we've got on this meter 103.3. So yeah, there's a little bit of difference between these two meters and it's hard to say which one's more accurate. I would, I would imagine that the snap-on one would be, but uh, I'll leave that for you guys to decide. So again, um, the only thing I really didn't test on this is durability, but it did stay alive with my students for about a week, which is normally pretty good because my guys can break uh, an anvil with a banana so they are pretty rough on tools and uh, this thing came back without a scratch. So I'm pretty pleased with the durability, at least in that aspect. And uh, you know, for the price, uh, there's, there's not many other meters that I've seen out there that are even close to this as far as the functions, the capabilities and the accuracy. Okay guys, just to wrap everything up and let you guys know exactly what I think of this meter, I think this is a very good meter for the money that you're paying for this meter. So uh, if your budget is higher than this, there is probably some other meters out here that's gonna meet your specifications a little bit better than this meter. However, if you've got $40, $50 for a meter, this would be the one I would purchase. Matter of fact, I'm thinking about just getting me one just to keep in my car uh, just because every once in a while I need a meter and I'm out somewhere. So, uh, again, um, good for the money. Seems like a solid meter, pretty good leads, nice carrying case. If those things are important to you, I would look at the Kiwitz KM601. So, I promised you guys at the beginning of the video what you could do to win one of these yourself. Matter of fact, it's going to be this exact same one I'm holding. So what I need you to do is go over to the Auto Scholar Mr. B Facebook page. You find me on Facebook, Auto Scholar Mr. B, and I will have this exact video up on my page. And what I want you guys to do is like the Auto Scholar Mr. B Facebook page, subscribe to the Auto Scholar Mr. B channel, and of course, share this post. So everybody that shares this post and does those other two things will be entered in a drawing. I'm going to give it a couple of weeks to get this uh, video kind of uh, panned out and then I'll put up another video just on the Facebook page uh, doing the drawing and I'm going to send this meter to you absolutely free, no cost. So this is just something I'm doing for my viewers for our second anniversary. So this is two years of Auto Scholar with Mr. B and I appreciate everybody that's supported me so far. Gosh, we have raised over almost very close to $5,000 for our scholarship fund for school. So give yourself a pat on the back if you've ever sat through one of these commercials that run through my videos. So again, like my uh, Auto Scholar Mr. B on Facebook, share this video that uh, has the picture of this meter on it and subscribe to the channel and I'll put you in a drawing. Also, I'm on uh, Instagram, Twitter, VK if you're in Eastern Europe, so find me there. And again, thanks for all the support over these past two years. We'll see you next time on Auto Scholar with Mr. B.